Hi Felix. Um, it's nice to be here on a Saturday morning. Um, I, I sort of um, struggle a bit with two ideas um, to coin my talk for this morning. Um, one idea being, well, I'm talking to the alumni, I'm talking to uh, the students, uh, and I, I thought of, we are the people that we have been waiting for, yeah. for a very long time in our country. Um, we've taken a back seat, irrespective of what we have acquired. You know, some of us um, coming really from humble beginnings, but we still, after acquiring whatever that we've acquired, we sit on top of it. And then the second one, because I said there were two ideas, the second one was um, your background does, doesn't determine where you are going, meaning your destiny is not shaped by where you come from. And that speaks much more to the students out there, the learners out there that are that are really still trying to find their way as we used to, some of us, um, maybe more than 20 years ago, so I'm sharing my age now. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, um, I'm gonna try to be uh, brief and straight to the point. I like speaking from my heart. So I, yeah, I share from, from within my heart whenever I share. My name is Vati, as it has been said. Um, well, what brings uh, food into my table is that I'm working as one of the executives in a global clinical research company, um, which is based in Pretoria. Uh, we also have footprint in Cape Town, Somerset West, and also in Mamelodi. Outside the country, we are in 11 countries in Europe. We're also in the USA. And I'm currently driving the growth strategy of the company to other African countries. Um, to date, I am proud to say I've just signed the MSA with Uganda, and um, only last, no, this week that we're ending, I was processing feasibilities for two Ugandan hospitals. Um, going to Tanzania, uh, second week of December, because I'm an African. I always look, for, look, th look out for, um, uh, for, for, for things for our continent. So I'm passionate about that. So that's me in terms of my work, like the work that brings money into the table. But then I'm going to leave that aside. That's not why I'm here. Um, coming back to the idea, I said two ideas, but I ended up choosing the one that says, your past, your background doesn't determine and would never determine your destination. Why do I say this? Well, I am going to speak much more of the work that I do uh, with Esther Malezi, Esther Malezi being a non-profit company. And in that work that I'm doing for Esther Malezi, I will start with a little bit of a background of what informed the work. Um, having grown up in the rural uh, villages uh, in the Eastern Cape, um, where I was telling some few people over break that um, I grew up there and having to look after the goats, fetching drinking water from the river three times on a daily basis because we didn't have running water, um, having to be late at school at times because I had to go and take the goats into what we used to call a dip. A dip is where the goats are going to a communal kind of place where they are treated so that they do not have a disease. Um, selling fish to the villagers to supplement the living uh, for my home. Um, growing up from the age of 10 years, um, looking after myself during the day, and then people would leave at six, would come back at six, and I had to do all of these things by myself. And in between the goats and the fetching of water is the cleaning of the house, is making dough with my own hands because we didn't afford to buy bread. Um, and then my aunt, who was in a high school uh, at the time, high school, which is very far away from where we were staying, um, would come and make bread out of that dough. And one thing that really bothered me at the time was 
how do I break loose out of this? I don't want this life. Where I'm being beaten up because the goats are not, they are equal number in the crop. You know, when it's raining, for those, if there are anyone coming from the rural villages here, uh, they would know when it's raining, the goats, they hide, you know, because it's raining. <laughs> they hide. And you, there you are, you are struggling to look for these goats, and then you get home, six o'clock, you didn't find all of them, you get a shambok. And I just didn't, I didn't want that life. I didn't, and then I worked so hard in terms of studying. I mean, from as early as 10 years of age, to like three, I was this ambitious person because I wanted to break loose out of this chain of poverty. Uh, well, to cut it short, I, could, I got good grades in Stat 5. Please bear with me, I don't know the issue of the grades, so I'm not going to confuse myself <laughs> with grades. <laughs> Standard 5, and then I was sent to a boarding school, got there, uh, Got very good results in mathematics. My mathematics teacher, Mr. Kerstin, found me a bursary that took me to matric. So I've been on bursaries and scholarships since the age of 13 years, up to PhD. I left the country sometime, more than 10 years ago, to go and study in Sweden. Also went to study uh, in the UK. Then, why do I talk about your background does not determine where you are going? Well, this is the statement that I always say to those young learners who are still struggling, which then are moving to Esther Malaysia. <coughs> Sometimes you just need people who just give you that break. I was given a break through the scholarships. Um, Kenan Collins is one of, the, of those scholarships that gave me a break. And fully understanding that for Kenan Collins to exist, there are some people, some individuals who said to themselves, well, we'll contribute financially to assist that child that we don't even know. So I became such a child who was assisted by people whom I don't even know. And that inspired me that one day when I become successful, I will surely plow back to our communities. So that's the work of Esther Malezi. At Esther Malezi, we have established this um, is a non-profit company that um, is very strange how well, I was telling other, uh, other colleagues uh, over tea time that, um, well, I had this group of friends that I had put together in a WhatsApp group. And then there was my aunt uh, who called me, who saw this child, you know, at home. For those who are coming from the rural villages, they would know this. Once you become educated, you're always being called yeah? for everything. <laughs> for everything. They think that we have a solution for everything. So one thing that uh, at home, which I appreciate, is that whenever there's a struggling child, they always reach out. Please, please, they're calling me Mavati. Please, Mavati, help this child. And as a result, I've assisted so many children. Some of them, I mean, was it last year when I was invited to a PhD graduation of one of those that I assisted from first year? Um, so it, I, I happened to be in that space. So and with this instance, my aunt is saying, I met this boy, this young boy from Etala, and I don't even know where Etala is. Uh, I know that it's in the Eastern Cape, but I've never been there. Um, has passed very well. Uh, now he needs to get to university. I looked at him and I looked at the mother and I saw that show, they are really struggling. So what I did, I went to a group of my friends. We are all professionals now, whether we studied in Sistinson student or we studied in <laughs> it doesn't matter, but now we are professionals. So I went to a group of my friends. Um, I'm, a, I'm a people's person, yeah? so I've got a huge group of friends. Uh, that I abuse a lot when it comes to helping other people. <laughs> and I went to them and I said, um, guys, there is this situation of this child here, the results. Uh, I'm willing to pledge X amount per month. Who else wants to pledge? And how much are you going to pledge? Then they started to respond. From there, we established a non-profit company. We registered it. We are very much busy with the PBO. My goodness, that is so involved process. Eh? 
There's a lot that they require in that PPO restoration. But anyway, we're busy with it. Uh, so we had uh, our restoration around July. We started around February, the mobilization in 2016. Around July, we got, um, we got registered. So non, uh, Esther Maledzi, as a non-profit company, we focus, I'll try to summarize, in a nutshell, we assist needy children who are also academically excellent to access tertiary education. So how do we do this? Well, we, we, part of what I'm going to be saying is theoretically, part of it is practical, meaning it's already operational. Part of it is still in, in the theory side of things. So we are focusing uh, on children from standard eight. I said I'm not going to do the great thing. From standard eight up to metric, uh, and there, this is where we go out there ourselves as professionals. We go to their schools. We do career fairs. We use that which we've already been blessed with, our professions. So if someone else is a medical doctor, I'll talk about how to become a medical doctor. And many of, of my friends are specialists. So you'll find out that there are seven doctors in the room. And then the other one is going to talk about public health. Another one is going to talk about uh, obstetrics and gynecology. Another one is talking about whatever. And then you have engineers in the group. You have chartered accountants and so on and so forth. So we go there and talk about how do you become what I am? What is it that you study? What is it that you, you focus on? Where can you study that? And so on and so forth. So, forth. so that's one aspect. We provide career fairs. So we, we choose our primary uh, focus are the schools that are in the places where we come from. Because the idea is to go and plow back from where we come from. However, because of the distance, I mean, I'm in Gauteng, some are in Deben, some are in Cape Town, some of my friends. So what we do is we have what we call low-hanging fruits. Next to where I stay, who was? Uh, Hadi, you know where I stay. <laughs> where I stay, there's Namalfias, yeah. not very far away from, from the estate where I stay in. So we'll choose a school from Namalfias. We go there and do the career day. We, we source everything ourselves. If, if we need to go and f get funding just for the refreshment for the children, we do. And most of the things are coming from our pockets. So we are, in that way, we are plowing back. So we are saying those are the low-hanging fruits for us. So we don't wait until we have big budget to fly to the Eastern Cape or to fly to the deep uh, rural area in Guazul Natal and so on and so forth, or Limpompo. Um, we, we, we focus on career fairs, and then we are busy now through the government internships who are applying for the interns so that they can offer extra lessons in mathematics, in science, and in accounting in the same schools that we've identified. So that process is still ongoing, and um, we also assess them with the applications, for them to apply to universities when they're in metric. So they form our pipeline. So we want to build our own pipeline that will be taking it to university. Currently, we have one student that we are supporting uh, and is completing um, accounting at uh, Nelson Mandela University. So we started, that's a student that I referred to earlier on from Egala. So this child uh, doesn't know the father, the mother is unemployed, uh, they are dependent on uh, the funds from the government grants of the other siblings because he's no longer qualifying, he's over 18. So um, we support this child to, like from the, uh, the, the money for the toiletries to talking to the DVCs, the deputy vice chancellors of the universities to get the waiver and whatnot. That's how we started. I, I remember 2016, I was on the DVC's DV, DV, case at NMMU. Uh, okay. And <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and um, so we support them to make sure that they are okay in terms of having this, what we call a stipend for them to eat. Because one thing that we saw as a gap is that you find that, that uh, the, the bursaries, they would offer bursaries for tuition fees and so on and so forth. 
but they wouldn't be uh, caring much many a times about whether or not the child has eaten. So that's the kind of support that we, we give. And then at the, at the tertiary level, as I'm concluding, um, at the tertiary level, we focus on uh, supporting them with all these things that I've just mentioned. And we are planning to have uh, life skills uh, workshops for them as well, because it's one thing to give money, it's one thing to make sure that it's well spent. So we need to teach them those life skills as well. Um, so that's what Esther Malitz is doing. On a yearly basis, we have a, a conference that we run to fundraise for the work of Esther Malizzi. We are not funded by anyone. Well, we are self-funded. Um, anyone who wants to fund, whether 200 or 500, 100 rand, is more than welcome. But we deliberately do not go out there and look for big sponsors and whatnot. Because we don't want to deviate this from the understanding of the fact that we were once helped and we should take the responsibility to help. Because the minute you think of the big Unilever or big whatever company, then you are shifting the responsibility. Yes, we would welcome any other big company that comes along, but we are not going out there to search for companies. We want to take responsibility. Then it comes to my second idea. We are the people that we have been waiting for. Other than that, then it's a TV show that I spoke about to a number of you. This is particularly it's in line with this work. Um, this is where I profile um, professionals from scarce skills fields. It's called You Are the Sought After. This is also to tell that child who is in the township, who is in the rural area, that if I have made it, you can make it too. So that's the message that we're trying to put across. I'm sure my two minutes is over. Thank you. Thank you.